Hi, welcome. This is unit five in your leading organizational change course. Here's your course layout and unit five is on recognizing what changes need to be made. And then we have your unit five learning outcomes. So these analyze the steps of planning change management in a given organization, select performance improvements for change, describe performance improvements measurements, <laughs> describe performance measurements for change management, analyze the communication skills talent needs to affect change in a given situation, and analyze change management practices in a given situation within a global context and why learning outcomes are important. So every learning outcome in your course ties back to the course materials, the content, the assessments, uh, any exam questions, all of that, they all tie back into it. And then from there, we have your overview topics for unit five. So what are the steps to plan change management, select performance improvements for change, describe performance measurements for change management, analyze communication skills needed for change, analyze change management practices in a global perspective. These are all of the topics that we're going to cover in this video. And then we have your unit five vocabulary and definitions that we're going to cover in this video. So first, we're going to talk about analyzing the steps of planning change management. So why do you need to plan that change? How would you go about planning changes in your department? Um, at what point do you decide you might need some help from outside people? And you also, another thing to consider, why is it important to plan that during the change process or plan change management during that process? And then how can leaders assist with planning change management? So depending on the change management model chosen to implement your change, the steps of planning change management may be a little different. A few basic steps may determine may include determining why change is needed, how the change will be implemented, who the change will be implemented by, supporting the team and employees, any follow through or measurement process, and then knowing when the change has been implemented and when you move into the maintenance phase. So as a leader, you may determine that change is needed in your department. It may not be a company-wide initiative, but maybe you just took over a department that has been generally known for having a bad attitude and you wanna make changes to improve the attitude and mindset. You may choose a change model and then create a plan on how you can affect change in your department. Even though you may have only have eight employees and this kind of a smaller scale change, it's still important to plan because without a plan, how do you know where you're going and how you're going to get there? This will also give you some practice for when larger company changes need to be implemented. Depending on the company, leadership may enact the planning stages of your change process, or they may hire an outside consultant or a company to help lead the change. It's important to understand that the more steps or people that there are between who makes the change process decisions and who implements those changes, the more complicated that change can become. So by regularly keeping an eye on the change process, you can be better connected to the issues that need to be dealt with daily. So for example, if your company hires an outside consultant to affect change and they wanna come into your department and essentially take over and they say to you, we don't really need you to do anything here. Um, you still need to, they're your employees. So you still need to make sure that you understand what they've been asked, is it within the scope of their job, and can what can you do to remove any of those obstacles? So it's still important for you to be involved, even if an outside company is trying to implement the change for you. Select performance improvements for change. So some of the things that you might wanna think about as we're going through this slide is, um, what can you do if an employee refuses to make necessary changes? 
what is a performance improvement plan, how can you help an employee understand needed change? Just a few to kind of think about. And then if an employee refuses to make changes, it's really important to deal with that type of behavior quickly. Um, it can only, it may only take a short conversation, ask a few questions about why it's not occurring, um, and maybe the employee will do a complete turnaround and just start um, implementing the change. Or if you've already had that type of conversation, now it might require a more in-depth meeting that, um, that requires a performance improvement plan. Typically, you will see a couple of verbal conversations first before you get to, to having a written performance plan. So every company calls that something a little bit different. They might say, oh, we're writing this person up. Um, it might have a title, like at your company, it might be called something else. But essentially, you will sit down with the employee and you will go through the behavior or the lack of change that you're seeing and then specifically state what you would like to see. And all of that is in writing. The employee has there to kind of put their understanding of it also in writing. Everybody signs it. It usually goes to human resource. So if an employee refuses to make changes simply because they're unaware of what they should be doing, then that should be a really quick situation to involve to resolve. But sometimes the resistance may be more deeply rooted and it's going to require additional time um, on your part or perhaps additional training with that individual. So a performance improvement plan is developed by a supervisor and the employee and it's focused on correcting employee behavior. It's typically developed, as I said, like after a few conversations where it has not been resolved. It's a written record that usually goes into their employee file. So with follow-up, it may be resolved in a week. It could take several months, depending on the depth of the behavior. And usually you'll put something in the plan that will say that, you know, I'll follow up with you in a week or a month or whatever it is um, to see. And maybe you keep the form to have those follow-ups documented in that form. It's really just um, an attempt to resolve an issue and improve employee productivity. So by meeting with an employee and explaining the necessary changes, you may gain a better understanding of the issue and how to get it resolved. There may be times when an employee refuses to make the changes even after several follow-up meetings with a performance improvement and plan. This usually, this will end eventually in terminating the employee and human resources would be involved in that. So if this is something that can be avoided, it should. The documentation will show efforts that are made by you and your team. Okay, now we have describing performance measurements for change management. So some of the questions you might ask in this section, are, you know, how can you measure if change is effective? What is an example of a performance measurement related to change management? And then should you measure employee performance during the change process? And if so, how? So when you've completed the necessary changes, you may go into a maintenance phase. And this is just maintaining the changes that have been implemented. So measuring that change is important. So the result may be additional business or clients, happier clients or happier employees. The measurement will depend on the change itself. So for example, if you've recently updated the website to make it more customer friendly, then a survey for customers to complete may measure if that change was effective or ineffective. Or if you've recently implemented changes to a production line, you may be able to review piecework records to determine if the process is easier, faster, or more efficient. You can also measure employee performance during the change process um, by looking at your few star employees, and you know who they are, um, who have completed most of the changes or helped to persuade other employees to engage with the changes. Just talking to them and asking questions about their understanding or the, the process that they went through or how much what how they might measure if it was successful or not. So if you've had a few employees who were not particularly helpful 
during the change process, that is also some kind of acknowledge when the changes are coming through, when the changes have been finished and you're going through um, maintenance stage. So either way, it may be important to recognize these employees. So checking the official tracked records and speaking to the team and employees may help you to measure and determine who actively participated and who did not. All right, and then we have, we're gonna talk a little bit about emotional intelligence. Um, here on the actually the next slide. So emotional intelligence is a culminating of all of these things. It's someone who shows they have good social skills, they're very self-aware, they know how to self-regulate, which means they don't get angry or upset in a conversation. They tend to use their words to explain why maybe they don't believe that that's correct. Um, it also gives them kind of self-motivation. Uh, it also shows empathy for employees. If you have that manager or supervisor who knows that you were out sick or your child was sick and then comes and as soon as they see you follows that, that's showing empathy. It's showing that emotional intelligence that they need to really be able to relate to people on kind of a connectedness level, if you will. Um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about emotional intelligence as we go into these next few slides. Um, analyze the communication skills needed to affect change. So what communication skills are needed in the change process? What is emotional intelligence? How to help employees develop, how can you help those employees develop communication skills? All to kind of consider as we go through this, the information for this slide. So communication skills are necessary during the change process and employees may um, they may thrive during the change process if they use them properly. So these employees can explain the exact issue, what change needs to be made or maybe a more efficient way to make those changes. So these are skills that might be written or oral or include the ability to easily explain very complicated information. So individuals with great communication skills may also be natural born leaders. These may be the people that you may want to train on your team, even in your own job. Um, it's some uh, leadership management style theories are that you should always have a bench, so to speak, they call it in sports terms, but a bench of people who are trained to take over for you in the case that you are promoted or you make a lateral move in your company, anything like that. So that you have someone who is easily or few people that are easily able to move into that position. And so keep your eye out, especially during changes to see which ones are taking to it easy. They're kind of those natural born leaders that you'll see arise during this process. And let's see. Employees and leaders can be trained to improve their communication skills. And most employers will offer this type of training regularly. Having the ability to better explain what is necessary, employees can develop relationships faster and complete their work in a more efficient manner. Emotional intelligence is another skill that can be developed and it helps leaders to better connect with their employees and lead people. So emotional intelligence is the ability to understand your own emotions and then others. It's a way to better connect with employees, management, vendors, clients. You may become more sympathetic, understanding, or effectively see another person's point of view if you have emotional intelligence. Analyze change management practices within a global context. So some of the questions to kind of consider as we go through this slide are what needs to be considered during a global change management pro project? How does culture play into the change process during a global expansion? And what is an example of how culture affects the change process? So when you're conducting business globally, everything you already do as a leader is needed as well as a general understanding of that other culture and their norms. Conducting a global change process can be complicated and it requires the feedback of people who work at that location and may understand the local culture. Culture may include habits, attitudes, values of the people in that area. 
It's also, to, it's also important to understand that one country can have numerous cultures and they cannot all be considered the same. So over the last decade, technology has certainly made it easier to manage global teams. The pandemic made video conferencing extremely popular and now we have learned to manage people who live all over the world. There are tools that don't require global travel to conduct work and we can easily check in to see how our team is doing. Technology has made the process of global change management much easier to manage. Managing an international team can also be complicated, but it will be a team rich in differences and thought processes, and it's important to accept those differences and different thought processes. So understanding the culture of the country that you are in or doing business in is important when you're attempting to implement changes. Understanding where a person's attitude is coming from or the values of the people can be detrimental to the change process. Culture might affect the change process when it conflicts with company values, and it will be important to understand how those differences might affect the process and how they can be incorporated. In conclusion, Unit 5. So in this video, we covered the steps of planning change management in a given organization, select performance improvements for change, describe performance measurements for change management, analyze the communication skills talent needs to affect change in a given situation, and then analyze change management practices in a given situation within a global context. And then we have a final change quote, all great changes are preceded by chaos. <laughs> it does seem to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way if you're a good leader, but it does seem to be that way sometimes. And then in conclusion, I just wanted to say thank you. So we are wrapping up your leading organizational change videos that come along with your study guide. I'm Dr. Marcy Stone, and I just wanted to say thanks for listening.